Hello everyone, today we've got a viewer requested video, thus we're going to talk about the blobfish. So let's jump right in. The blobfish, Cycrolutes marcidus, like the tardigrade, has become extremely popular in the media in recent years. The reason for its renown isn't that it's capable of survival in space, though. The blobfish is recognizable for just how darn ugly it looks. It looks like a sad, droopy face. However, most people don't realize that this isn't its normal face. You see, the blobfish is a member of the Sculpin superfamily Cotoidea. But we need to take a few steps back before we can proceed. So let's travel down the phylogenetic path that leads us to the unusual blobfish. We share a common ancestor with ray finned fish, or actinopterygians, that lived some 430 million years ago in the Silurian period, and this split was covered in my video New Kinds. When we look back at the evolution during the Phanerozoic, we often omit the evolution of sea dwelling life, especially the fish, right after tetrapods made their way onto dry land. This omission makes it seem as if these peripheral lineages didn't do anything interesting after they diverged from our line of descent, but this is far from accurate. Ray fin fish in particular have a rich evolutionary history, just as interesting as tetrapods, since both contain about the same number of species. Traveling down the ray fin side, we come to the following series of clades, each is less distantly related to all other ray fin fish. Polyp teriformes, containing bichurs and reed fish, Acepenseriformes, the sturgeons and paddlefish, and holosti, the bowfins and gars. The remaining clade that includes all other ray fin fish is teleosti, or the completely bony fish. Understand that since fish are vertebrates, they already had bones, and no surprise, there's been a lot of genetic work figuring out how fins form and vary. However, teleost fish are distinguished from the others by having something not involving fins having a movable premaxilla with jaw muscles allowing them to protrude their jaws forward. Within teleosti is the clade Euteleosti, or true completely bony fish, and within that is the clade Acanthomorpha, the spiny rayed fish. These are so called because of their hollow, unsegmented spines at the anterior edge of the dorsal and anal fins. Acanthomorpha is an enormous clade as it contains over 14,000 species, about one third of all extant vertebrates. This and other Teleos lineages underwent a dramatic diversification event in a period spanning the late Mesozoic into the early Cenozoic, which is dubbed the Second Age of Fish in a paper by Thomas J. Neer et al. Within Acanthomorpha is the clade Scorpaniformes, which includes scorpion fish, sculpins, and a number of other sharp fish. That brings us back to Cotoidea, comprising the sculpins, poachers, and sea ravens. The blobfish is in a specific family of sculpins called Cycrolutidae, or the fathead sculpins, which are all bottom-dwelling and tadpole-shaped. The genus the blobfish is in, Cycrolutes, currently contains 11 species, all of which are native to the dark depths of the North Pacific Rim. Because of how deep the blobfish lives, it doesn't have a swim bladder nor much of a skeleton. Instead, its flesh is mostly a gelatinous mass buoyant enough to keep it calmly floating just above the sea floor. If this is the normal face of the blobfish, then why do pictures show it so deformed? Well, since it doesn't have much of a skeleton, its body collapses when taken out of its normal pressure range. That's the blobfish, a deep sea teleost whose body becomes disfigured when taken to the surface. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.